My name is Melvin Orozco. I'm from Casetenango, Guatemala. I came here at four years old and it was because my father was already here. He was originally supposed to stay here for four years. Uh, within those four years, he ended, ended up loving America and realized that he, me and my mother would have a better future here in the U.S. than in Guatemala. With that, we ended up coming to Alabama. Why Alabama? Why Alabama? My, my father had already settled here. He had already found a job and he ended up loving, loving it here. It's peaceful and it's quiet and it's calm. It, originally, he was just supposed to stay here for four years, but he ended up just loving it and realized that we would end up having a better future here than in Guatemala. Everything's just well. There's just a lot of southern hospitality here, and everybody's usually nice and just comforting. Well, obviously, when HP 56 hit, um, I really didn't know what to expect. To be honest, um, there are a lot of people just saying, "Oh, we're gonna get deported." Um, uh, the first thing that came to my head was that I. That everything I had worked for when it was school, every every letter grade I had earned, you know, um, it would just go out to waste. That everything my parents had sacrificed, that it would just be all for nothing. And so, you know, because of that, I kind of felt like dropping out of school because I just thought, well, this law here in Alabama basically means I have no future. So I might as well just just give up, throw in the towel. But obviously, my parents. Um, they never, they never finished high school. When they finished school, uh, each of them had their own reasons for doing that. Uh, my father, he he had to uh, drop out and start to work because of his father. His father was an alcoholic, so any money he received would go to alcohol. And for my father to continue on to the next grade, he would have to buy his own own materials to go. Obviously, here in the U.S., um, basically you go to public school, they give you those those for free, you know. But obviously, there is totally different, and so because of that, he had to drop out and continue and start to work. My mother, um, she has something similar. Obviously, she comes from a family of five, and she obviously needed to start to work. She tells me that her mother went three days without eating, and that she went a day without eating just so her mother could be full for that night. Thanks to my parents, every time they would just drop me off at school, they would always tell me, Ech la ganas, which means uh, give it your all. So honestly, my parents always realized that how important education is, not just for a kid, but also for an adult. Are you a good student? Yes, I, I make all A's, and I, I'm really dreaming of one day going to college, and not just for me, but for my parents as well, to make them proud. What would you like to do? Honestly, that's something really that I'm not really sure about. I uh, was originally thinking architecture, but now I'm kind of leaning towards being a lawyer. What would you like to be a lawyer? A lawyer. I like to say immigration because I, I really am interested in the laws and everything, so maybe I'll get into some of that. Would you like to um, go into immigration law or something like to defend people who are mistreated or, or just you like the idea of being a lawyer? Is that, you know, does it have to do with, with your story as well? I would like to go into immigration, but I, I would I love helping people, if anything. So, if anything, if there's ever anything molestic or anything like that, I would try to help. Okay, so you apply for the deferred action, yes. right? Yes. And, and you obtained that. Yes, I did apply for the deferred action for childhood arrivals. And yes, I did qualify for it. So what's next now? What's next? Well, obviously here in Alabama, they're having, where the state is now allowing uh, kids who applied for DACA to receive their licenses, their license to drive. So uh, I'm going to try working on that to, to convince Alabama that we need them. Obviously, where I come from is um, Alexander City, and there we really don't have any means of transportation besides car. So pretty much, and everything's really far away, so it's not like you can just walk to the store next door or anything. You kind of have to drive. So the means of transportation is very important. Okay. And what about your family? My family has always been very supportive. They've always told me to try my best and do everything the best that I can.
give it my all. Well, when HP 56 first hit, I remember me and my parents staying up late at night uh, watching the news. And we were just so close to the TV, like our faces were touching it because we were just listening in on what, what, what they were going to say about the law. And we were just shocked and I remember my father just crying over that. And I just thought to myself, this isn't right. This law made my father cry and you know, it made me think. And it really hurt me hard, you know, to see my father cry because, well, he has cried, but, you know, it's been like family issues, whether it's been a funeral or something has, bad has happened to an aunt or an uncle. But this, to me, just hurt me more, just, just like words on paper, you know, hurt him. So. And the first thing that came to my head was, what, what am I going to do if my parents get deported? I can't work. I'm still in high school, um, I'm undocumented, so, and I have two younger sisters. And if they're they're gone, I'm left to left to take care of them. So what can I do? Uh, no, my sisters were born here. Okay. So obviously, and, and if they and if I was deported as well, then my sisters would be here by themselves. And it would just be bad. Um, no. As an immigrant child, I kind of had to grow up kind of faster than most kids. Um, I remember as a little kid, I, when I first started school, it was, re it was really hard because I didn't know English. My parents didn't either. And I remember that my parents uh, bought these VHS, VHS tapes and they had like English lessons on them. And I remember me and them just watching them late at night and they would just be with me in bed just l watching them and learning English. And that's just been one of my fondest memories. Um, and I remember just going to school and then coming home and having to do homework and it was just the worst. I remember, up, I remember just, just staying up late at night, just pulling and crying because I just couldn't understand it. And my parents couldn't, couldn't help me either. It was, there was only certain subjects that I could help me with, whether it was math. They did know some of history, so they could help me with that. But things like uh, grammar and reading, that, that was kind of all on me. So I kind of had to grow up kind of fast. And I, for most kids, they, they had parents who could help them, and I, I kind of had to mature a lot quicker. Um, I had to pay twice the attention, I had to try twice as hard.